Welcome once again, everyone. Today we have something very special for you. My name is Philip Koenig and my colleague Jürgen Rudolph. We are from A1 Digital and we are organizing this webinar in cooperation with Software AG, our technology partners in the internet platform sector. And the truly special thing today is that we have a special guest from Ration Railway, Tobias Holl. Welcome, Tobias. Thank you for being here. Hello, everyone. Many people already know Ration Railway, especially since they set a world record last year with the longest passenger train in the world. The railway also has a segment that deals with rail freight transport, not passenger transport, but the transportation of goods by rail. And that's the Butner Güterbahn. Butner Güterbahn is a customer of A1 Digital using one of the IoT solutions, Rail Insight. And today, we'll show you exactly what's in use and how they digitize their freight cars. In other words, Today is not so much about theory, but rather real insights and practical experiences. Tobias, you are the Senior IT Project Manager at Ration Railway, and now I hand it over to you. All right, thank you, Philip, for your introduction. Also, from my side, a warm hello, everyone. I am delighted today to present a project I conducted with Ration Railway. It's about the digitization, or should I say, smartification of our freight car fleet. As Philip already mentioned, some of you know us from the world record attempt with the longest passenger train, consisting of 100 wagons stretching nearly 2 kilometers. That was successfully carried out in autumn 2022. And as Philip already mentioned, perhaps less known is that we also have freight transport. We have approximately 35 to 40 freight trains running every day and a fleet of about 250 freight cars. In a nutshell, we handle both passenger and freight transport. We also transport various types of vehicles through the tunnel, approximately half a million vehicles. We are about 1,600 colleagues with a network spanning almost 400 kilometers, located in the canton of Graubünden, the easternmost canton in Switzerland. Other well-known brands of ours are Benina Express and Glacier Express. I'll now dive into the topic here. I attended the InnoTrans Forum Gute Verkehr in Berlin in 2018, and the question posed was, what is the most neglected asset of the railway? It's not hard to guess, it's the freight car. And from this situation, our project's mission emerged, namely to make the freight car smarter. Now, what does smart freight cars mean for us? What are our needs? What are our use cases? Firstly, it's quite basic to know where our cars are located. At the moment, we have relatively little transparency in this regard. Now we can view this on a map. It's not just knowing about where the cars are, but also where we have available parking spaces, where we can place additional cars. Finding available spots on a siding can sometimes be challenging. We also want to improve the positioning of the cars. That means determining the optimal car for a job, not sending a car all over the network, but choosing one that is as close as possible. We also need to increase the utilization of the cars and trains. For us, a train like this one is the ultimate. Long trains like this are rare, but that's the goal. In passenger transport, there is constantly growing demand for capacity, which means for freight transport, there are few available slots, and we need to use them as optimally as possible. Maintenance is also a recurring topic. 
We want to do as little as possible, but as much as necessary. And when we have the means to optimize maintenance, especially when it's necessary. When a problem is detected, the car should go in for repairs. But we want to keep it on the network for as long as possible. So, if nothing seems to be broken, or if the mileage has not been reached, if the maintenance window hasn't been reached yet, we want to keep it running. For us, it's also important to know the orientation of the car on the track, especially with conveyor cars, these motor cars, the conveyors need to be lined up properly, or else the ballast falls out. So the person in charge of dispatching trains needs to know this. There are also other examples, such as construction machinery, which have a specific working direction and need to be brought to the construction site correctly, or they end up in the wrong place. What's also very interesting for dispatching is knowing the loading condition. If you know a car is empty, you can assign it to your next job. Or if there's something in it, then the customer also has to pay a fee. We've solved this by attaching a sensor to the bottom of the car's frame, that red sensor there. And it measures the distance between the car frame and the axle to determine if there's anything on it. If there's something on it, the distance is shorter because it's being compressed. This is very helpful, especially for wood transport, oil transport, where you can't see if something is inside an oil tank or not. And lastly, another use case is temperature monitoring. For food transports, this is essential. We not only monitor, but also record the temperature to provide proof of maintaining the cold chain. We've grouped these different use cases into four or five main application scenarios. The first use case is visualization, simply displaying where the vehicle is located. The second use case is vehicle maintenance, which we can optimize. The third is monitoring and triggering alarms, especially for temperature monitoring. The fourth is object localization, where we aim to monitor and locate other machinery or smaller installations. The data science use case is very interesting, but we haven't been able to implement it so far. That's the top layer, the user layer on one side. The bottom layer is the vehicles, including freight cars, thermal vehicles, or infrastructure vehicles, construction vehicles, and then there are small devices. These are actually the carriers of the sensors out there. A1 Digital's job is to connect these two layers. On the one hand, with the device and connectivity layer, and on the other hand, with the platform and data center layer. As Philip mentioned, Software AG is behind the data center layer with the Cumulosity platform. On this layer, there are also interfaces to peripheral systems, our internal systems, and third-party systems. Now, we started a project, we issued a tender, and approximately 12 providers offered solutions. For us, these four points were critical success factors. Firstly, it needs to be easy to install. We don't want to bring a freight car into the workshop just to install a device. The solution here involves magnets and this black adhesive. These magnets hold the devices so firmly that you cannot remove them without tools. But just to be sure, we added some adhesive. However, you can remove them with tools. But the important thing is that the installation is done in the field, so you can easily equip a large number of cars. This is quick. But the second and third points are connected. Mapping to the track network is very important for us. 
We are a railway company and we want to know where the car is on the track. Not in a parking lot or on a highway, but the track is crucial for us. When it comes to recording the mileage, the positions must be mapped to the same network so that the actual distance is calculated, not just a straight line. To extend battery life, we've set a power saving mode. The devices only need to report their position every 15 minutes. That means we don't have continuous GPS recording, it's intermittent. So we need to connect the dots over the network. The last point is acceptable investment, even though freight cars are the most neglected. We wanted to make the investment, and it should be cost-effective. It shouldn't be too expensive. The implementation? How do we approach it? Essentially, we received a box from A1 Digital with 10 devices. With these, we conducted a proof of concept. We also had access to an environment for testing. This gave us the opportunity to test how it works on our terrain in the Alps. We tested GPS reception, network coverage, how the devices perform at minus 20 degrees Celsius and in higher altitudes. We also optimized the installation location on the cars based on these experiences. After that, we proceeded with the actual project. We also had resources that supported us during the installation. There's an app which simplified staff training, making it quite quick. We were able to equip around 500 vehicles within three months. So about 90% of our vehicles. There's always a residual inventory somewhere that is more complicated to equip because these cars are rarely on the move and you really have to go to them. They can be anywhere and that could be time consuming and take a while. Now we're in the operational phase. It's been a little over two years and it's functioning well so far. The feedback from users is positive. This means that transparent information is highly appreciated. And there's now a desire for more. We see positive effects, especially in dispatching. As for maintenance, we'll have to see as the mileage data gets integrated and the effects will become evident. But I think it will help us optimize maintenance. We see potential for more. We'd like to do more, but it requires resources and people with specific skills. It's not widespread within our organization, but we are working on it. And we have a partner in A1 Digital who is also very helpful. As I mentioned, A1 Digital is a service provider together with Software AG and Cargomon. The operation is running fairly smoothly. We have an internal ticketing system, which is pretty standard. I won't hide the fact that there have been some problems. Not everything runs smoothly. The system needs maintenance, and it has some growing pains. For example, we had a loss of historical data because the standard setting was two years, and it was overlooked that this data needs to be copied. The other issue was related to the shutdown of the 2G network in Switzerland. Abroad, the network is still in operation, but it will eventually be shut down there as well. It's not that these devices can only use 2G, they can also use 4G, but they need to be switched to a different mode to work properly.
There were some devices that became offline during this transition. They were not updated while in storage, so they went offline. At the moment, we receive the service as a black box, which means we also rely on the proactivity from A1 digital side. Sometimes, there are a few things we would like to see improved. Things are going fairly well, and looking ahead, there is a desire for more. We continue to equip more vehicles, more locomotives, and more operational vehicles. We also integrate data from third-party providers. What's very interesting for us are these measuring gauges. They allow us to precisely determine the weight of the cargo within a few percentage points. This is useful for billing and safety considerations. It is very interesting to know the weight immediately. Another topic is that railway professionals refer to wagon numbers, while shippers or freight forwarders use container numbers or swap body numbers. There needs to be a way to reconcile these terms so that everyone is speaking the same language. And that's what we are currently working on. How can we match wagon numbers with container numbers? We're also looking into how we can get more out of our data. Unfortunately, at the moment, we don't have the resources for it. Well, I'm almost at the end, just taking a quick look outside how it looks out there. What I've been talking about is not just nonsense, it is a fact. I hope you can see it now. Oops, now we can see the first tracker. It's the red box on the car. Here comes the second. The third. And the fourth. Are you going to show us all 500 trackers? <laughs> no, 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 no. Our trains are not that long. And there's another tracking, a swap body. Exactly the issue I mentioned earlier. The car down there on the track, and it also has tracking. Now the challenge is, how can we save on tracking by finding a smart solution to marry them? Well, we don't have such long trains, no problem. Now, the train has departed. That concludes my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. And now I hand it back to Philip. Thank you, Tobias. That was certainly an interesting presentation. And it's great to get practical insights because a use case is initially something very theoretical. And it depends on how it's implemented and how it actually works in the business case. Now I'd like to turn it back over to our colleague Jürgen Rudolph. Jürgen, you're responsible for A1 Digital's rail solutions. And we'd like to hear from you how this all actually works and what's behind the implementation. Thank you, Philip. I have the first slide here, how it all began. I'm going down memory lane because Smart Cargo at the time at Rail Cargo Austria was my baby because I was responsible for the rollout of Smart Cargo, which is essentially the same solution that Tobias explained for Ration Railway. Back in 2019, this is how we rolled out things at Rail Cargo Austria. And why was this all done? 
It's just like what you see on the top right. Here, the current position is displayed. And the most important thing was that most people wanted to know where their freight car was. I think this is the case in business everywhere. Analog cars have disappeared in their own countries and also when traveling abroad. They require a new system to know where they are. The second most important point was the exact mileage, which is important for maintenance intervals, brakes, wheel sets, and so on. The exact location and mileage is important. Also for billing customers. Now one could know exactly how many kilometers these freight cars had really traveled in Eastern Anatolia or other regions where previously only rough estimates could be made. Customer service was also greatly improved by tracking as customers could now be informed of the delivery status and estimated arrival times. The fourth major point that was important for Rail Cargo Austria, and I believe also for Ration Railway, was improper loading, damage that occurred due to improper loading, and the impacts that could be detected. Hard impacts through whatever accidents occurred. Shock events are very important, where we have learned a lot. Also identified indications of damage to the infrastructure. We were also able to find where lighter impacts kept occurring in the same location. In broad terms, these are the points. Here's an overview of the Rail Insight solution. We start on the far left with the freight car. The freight car has been analog for over 190 years since the first train was operated in 1825. And we have started digitalizing it on the car. Here's an example. This is roughly what we installed on Ration Railway cars as well. An operational version. We have various versions here, solar powered with different run times. Ultimately, anything is possible. We have selected these packages, as Tobias mentioned, that Rail Cargo Austria also uses. There's a minimum of six years of battery life. If I were to choose a solar version, then I would have approximately 10 years of runtime. But that's only possible with intelligent data transmission. It's not necessary to transmit the position every second. The 15-minute intervals that Tobias mentioned are a very reasonable method for proper tracking and tracing. Then we have the connectivity, where we, A1 Telecom Austria Group, have many roaming partners in over 140 countries, offering reliable data connectivity. Data is transmitted from the freight car through this IoT unit with an integrated SIM card to the Rail Insight IoT platform, which we have jointly developed with Software AG on their Cumulosity platform and additionally adapted for rail applications. On the Rail Insight IoT platform, there is a reverse channel to the IoT units where I can perform firmware updates, configurations, adjustments, calibrations, and so on. The information I take out of it, the location, tracking and tracing, I can extract states that the vehicle is in, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, throughout the year. And through Bluetooth Low Energy, or BLE, I can connect additional sensors. This is very important because, as Tobias has also shown, these distance sensors from the chassis to the axle now roughly indicate the loading with the measuring gauges, which we have now launched. With our hardware supplier, Cargomon, we can now measure more precisely bending, and in 95% of the cases, we are within a range of plus or minus 2%. We also have the capability to create rules, reports, and notifications here. We extract data from these for our data analysis, which, with machine learning and artificial intelligence, extract even more from this data. 
And all of this is for users in logistics, maintenance, and customer service. These applications are served by this data hub, this platform. About two weeks ago, we released our Rail Insight Trial Box. This is a nice aluminum case with 10 devices inside, as Tobia showed. They can also be attached to the freight cars with magnets. The customer then has three months of access to a platform. They can log in and see how the tracking and tracing works. We advise and provide support during this time. And afterward, we try to extract even more data through our analysis and conduct a post-workshop with the customer to show what is possible with this data and how it all works. This is for companies starting out and don't yet have a digital program. We, as A1 Digital, can step in at any juncture and offer our services in terms of connectivity, IoT platform, cloud services, and data analysis. Thank you, Tobias, for also mentioning that not everything is going smoothly. We are equally committed to receiving this feedback from our customers. Just like with the storage issue, where data from the platform would disappear after two years, we now have a routine in place where we store the data elsewhere, ensuring that historical data is not lost. I think that's learning by doing, and that's how projects should run. Do we have another topic, Philip, that we wanted to address briefly? Thanks, Jürgen. An important topic before we get to the questions. So what is the secret to success? How does it all work? And here, it's simply necessary to say, for this to work as we've described, there must be a collaboration. A very close collaboration between, on one hand, the domain experts, in this case, Bündner Gutterbahn, they know their use case. They know what they need. And on the other hand, there is also the technology experts. And in this case, it's A1 Digital. A1 Digital belongs to the A1 Telecom Austria Group. That means we have a telecommunications company behind us. So we not only supply the appropriate hardware, as Jürgen described, but we also provide the appropriate SIM cards for it and the suitable platforms. Rail Insight is based on the technology by Software AG, the platform we build our industry-specific solution. So, in this example, we have now presented Rail Insight, but we also have solutions for other industries, such as logistics, construction, and energy monitoring. So it's really always this chain. There's an asset, in this case it's the freight car, which we can connect to. The asset receives IoT hardware, the appropriate mobile connectivity, and then also the user platform for monitoring. But also for analytics, which means, in case you want your data to be further enriched, you can perform analysis with the data you have. After all of this, you are collecting a lot of data. There are indeed very interesting ideas that can be further explored with the data you have, extracting additional valuable information, not just tracking and tracing, but also other use cases. Perhaps if we have time, we can discuss this further. At the end of the chain, there is of course domain expertise from the users. So that's where this turnkey solution comes into play. It also depends on the service, on the interaction between domain experts, technology experts, and also in the application of the service. You receive feedback all the time, what works well, where improvements are needed. In this case, that was a recipe for success. We have copied this recipe for success. Also, in various other cases, in our case, our specialist team 
can be used for many other industries. We are really moving from an analog world to a data-driven business model. And I think it's very important in today's time that we step in and help our customers digitize their operations and realize new business models based on data. Now, let's move on to the questions and we'll provide answers. I'd like to start with this question. What is the situation in Switzerland? It can get very cold in the Alps. Low temperatures play a role. Are there potentially problems because of this? We have temperatures as low as minus 20 to minus 25 degrees Celsius in Engadin and over the Bernina Pass. We haven't encountered any specific problems. Yes, it works and it's guaranteed to work even down to minus 20 degrees. From the manufacturer's perspective, I don't see any issues even at minus 25 degrees. The term DAC, Digital Automatic Coupling, aren't these use cases already served by DAC? I'll take that question. The DAC and the data lines, as well as the power supply, are indeed a good thing. There is a data line. Now, in the case of locomotives and freight cars operating within your own environment, meaning when you're using your own locomotives and freight cars, you can have a good data connection here and receive data from each individual car. However, when you're in international traffic, and the freight car is transferred to another railway company, the locomotive still receives data through these data lines. However, the car owner may not necessarily want to share data about the condition of their car. In this case, it will be necessary to establish an additional data channel directly from the freight car and deliver to the parties that also need the data. Hence, the coexistence of two data streams that complement each other. Maybe I can add this. One must not forget that the freight car is not always attached to a train. It sometimes sits idle in a field. In such cases, the coupling doesn't help much because it's not always connected. But you still want to know where your freight car is, even when it's just sitting idle. Okay, thank you very much. The next question is, is there cross-border traffic? If so, how has this been addressed? Well. We do have a little bit of cross-border traffic. Our southernmost station is in Italy. And we have traffic there, mainly transporting wood. There's no need for a special solution for this. Through A1 Digital, we have roaming in Italy. And this use case is covered. So it works seamlessly. I can add that for rail cargo, which operates throughout Europe, roaming and coverage areas were defined, initially encompassing all of Europe plus the Asian part of Turkey. However, upon request, with our roaming partners and within A1 Telecom Austria Group, it can be extended worldwide. On to the next question. Where does the problem lie in marrying containers with the wagon? After all, this information is known from the consignment note. The thing is, the consignment note is usually in paper form and people work with digital systems. Then it becomes challenging. But the shipper, at least in our case, doesn't know on which wagon or exact wagon number where the container is located. They only know their container number. But for us, for planning, 
Both pieces of information are necessary, and that's where the challenge lies. Yes, well, I believe swap containers are not only on rail, but also on the road and water transport. There are two parallel systems here. Of course, there is a possibility, if the right device is used, they can communicate with each other. But if we have a kind of standardization here, then everything will be possible in the future. We are working on it. There are individual applications. It will be possible. As long as we have many parallel systems, there are still some complexities to overcome. But theoretically, from a technical standpoint, I can connect any containers via Bluetooth to all of our old systems and transmit the data together. And then I know that this swap container has a particular ID number, and that is directly linked to the wagon number. Okay, then the last question is about weight measurement. First, how accurate is it? I mean, Jürgen, you already answered it earlier. Secondly, what is the range in terms of minimum and maximum weight for it to work? So, we have the two systems I mentioned. The distance measurement, as Tobias showed, I would say it can show whether it's loaded, empty, or approximately half full. So, loaded and unloaded, which is important. In this more accurate measurement, we are really within a range of plus or minus 2%. And I can only say we conducted tests where a colleague jumped onto an empty freight car, which I would say still weighed around 20 tons. But the colleague only weighed 70 kilograms, and you can see a reaction in the measurement. So when we are fully loaded, or if a car has 80 or 90 tons, we are truly operating within the plus or minus 2% range. I would say this plus or minus 2% is even a bit conservative. For example, with four measuring devices well positioned on each bogey, left and right, we can detect not only the relatively precise bending, but also the uneven loading, which is of interest for many use cases. Great. Well, there's not much left for me to say. Perhaps a reminder to our participants, if you'd like to try this out. Jürgen mentioned our Rail Insight trial box earlier. It's the package we've put together to conduct a relatively small, quick test in your company. Please contact us if you're interested. Now, I would like to say a big thank you to Jürgen and Tobias again. We've gone well over our time, but most people have stayed with us. Thank you as well. I can see the number of participants hasn't dropped much, so I think the topic is still very interesting and engaging people. Thanks again to everyone, and until next time.